मॉडल फॉर डिस्क्रीट टाइम मार्को चेन लेक्चर सेवन रेड्यूसबल मार्को चेन द लास्ट थ्री लेक्चर्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड इरेड्यूसबल मार्को चेन एंड दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस रेड्यूसबल मार्को चेन सो इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ रेड्यूसबल मार्को चेन देन आई एम गोइंग टू गिव द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ रेड्यूसबल मार्को चेन and also i am going to present some simple examples then finally one important uh, application of reducible marco chain that is a gamblers ruin chain problem gamblers ruin problem going to be discussed before we discuss the reducible marco chain let me explain the closed communicating class of states this is uh, this definition we have already given in the few lectures earlier also again i am giving using this we are going to conclude the marco chain is a reducible marco chain or irreducible marco chain the closed communicating class suppose you collect the uh, set of states that you name it uh, label with a c if that collection of our set of states is going to be called it as a closed communicating class of states if uh, it satisfies no such state outside c can be reached from any state in c then c is said to be closed communicating class of states if uh, in a set of uh, states forming a closed communicating class and it has only one element only one state you cannot include one more state so that it is going to be a closed communicating class of states then that class is uh, in that class the state is going to be called it as a observing state and you know the definition of observing state that means the one step transition probability i to i that is equal to 1 so there are two ways you can have a observing state either pia is equal to 1 or the closed communicating class has only one element then that state is going to be observing state so using a closed communicating class of states we are going to distinguish or we are going to make the reducible marco chain and irreducible marco chain how let me see the definition of a irreducible marco chain if the marco chain does not contain any other closed communicating class of states other than the state space yes then the marco chain is called a irreducible marco chain otherwise it is a reducible marco chain that means uh, you have a marco chain with the state space capital s you are trying to create the closed communicating class if that class and the state space s yes, both are one and the same that means uh, all the states are going to form a one closed communicating class that means each state is communicating with each other state and that is same as the state space then that marco chain is a irreducible marco chain otherwise that marco chain is going to be called as a reducible marco chain before we go to the various reducible marco chain i am going to give few examples so through this example we can make the classification over the reducible marco chain you see the first example it has uh, five states instead of the one step transition probability matrix i have drawn the state transition diagram so using this you can easily able to conclude whether it is going to be a reducible marco chain or irreducible marco chain if you see the arc from 3 to 1 and uh, the states 0 1 and 2 all three are connected therefore you can conclude 0 1 and 2 is going to form a closed communicating class because uh, all the states inside that class are communicating each other there is no state going away from this this collection to outside it satisfies the closed communicating class uh, definition whereas the 3 and 4 even though there is a communication between 3 and 4 states 
once the system goes from 3 to 1, it will not be back. Therefore, the states 3 and 4 are going to be Ranchian states. The first visit if you find out uh, F i i capital F i i i for uh, state 3 and 4, it is going to be less than 1, whatever be the probability. Here I have not assigned the probability, you can assign the probability positive uh, 0 to 1 and uh, you will get the conclusion the states 3 and 4 are going to be the transient states. So, since it satisfies the definition of a reducible Markov chain, that means uh, you have a closed communicating class which is other than the state space. That means uh, you have a closed communicating class with the fewer elements than the state space 0, 1 and 2 and the few transient states. Therefore, this Markov chain has a reducible Markov chain of some type I am going to discuss later. See the second example, this also has the 5 states, if you observe you will conclude the states 0, 1 and 2 are going to be the transient states, whereas the state 3 as well as 4 are going to form a two different uh, close communicating class, but it consists of only one element in it, only one state in it. You cannot include the state 1 along with 3 or you cannot include the state 2 along with 4 to create a close communicating class. Therefore, the states 3 and 4 will form a close communicating class with one single state in each in it respectively and these three, these two states are uh, observing states also. So, this is also going to form a reducible Markov chain. See the third example, this has uh, 3 plus 3, 6 states, out of 6 states there is no backward arc to the states, st to the state 3. Therefore, state 3 will, will be a transient state, whereas a state states 0, 1 and 2 form a close communicating class. Similarly, the states 4 and 5 will form a close, another close communicating class of states. So, in the third example, we have a two close communicating classes of states, whereas the first example you have one close communicating class and uh, transient states. You see that all these three examples you have a collection of transient states and uh, close communicating class either one or many or uh, the close communicating class consists of only one element, but uh, all the states uh, all the model has uh, fewer transient states. Therefore you can easily find out the reducible Markov chain whenever it is not going to form a only one close communicating class with all the states if that is not there then all other things are going to be the ir or on and all other things are going to be a reducible Markov chain. So, based on these three examples there are some more example I can create with the infinite state, but here I have not made it. But based on these three examples, you can have some idea how one can have a various types of reducible Markov chain. I am listing here in these the default is all the types as the few transient states, along with that it has a one close communicating class of states that is a one type, one or more observing states that is similar to the example 2, the first one is similar to the first example. The third one is with more than one closed communicating class of states that is related to the third example, but uh, here I have not specified whether it is a finite state or infinite state uh, Markov chain. So, immaterial of that the reducible Markov chain can be classified into these three in general. 
So we are going to discuss uh, out of these three, the first two we are going to discuss in detail and the third I am not going to discuss. So the way we are discussing the first model, the similar logic can be used to study the third type also. The first type, it is a reducible Markov chain that means uh, it has the fewer transient states and uh, one close communicating class. My interest is to study the stationary distribution. Therefore, I am making further assumption so that uh, I can go for studying the stationary distribution. For that, I am making the first assumption, it is a finite state model, state space is finite. And also, this model state space has the one close communicating class and the set of transient states. So, whatever the states in the close communicating class, that state I am making at a aperiodic. Aperiodic is important to study the stationary distribution, therefore I am making the aperiodic state. So, this state space is the collection of the transient states as well as one close communicating class. Therefore, I am making a two notation C and T, C for the set of close communicating class only one, the T is set of all transient states. Therefore, the state space S is going to be the C union capital T. Since it has one close communicating class and set of transient states, I am reordering the one step transition probability matrix such a way that the first few rows are corresponding to the states of the close communicating class. Therefore, I make it a C, but inside suppose uh, uh, the state space the uh, number of uh, states in this uh, reducible Markov chain is capital N, there is a possibility some fewer elements, fewer states may be in the capital C. Therefore, fewer rows that will make a sub matrix that is P1. That means, a C to C that sub matrix is a one step transition probability sub matrix is P1. Whereas, a, the one step transition probability going from close communicating class that states to the transient states that probability is 0. Therefore, all the entities are 0. Therefore, this 0 is nothing but a, a matrix sub matrix with the number of rows is a number of uh, states in the close communicating class and the number of column that is same as the number of uh, transient states. This is the way we reorder the one step transition probability matrix. Therefore, C to capital T that is a sub matrix of zeros. The remaining elements are capital T that you reorder it in the other remaining rows. Therefore, T to C will be a some non-zero fewer elements that is a R1 matrix, R1 sub matrix. And similarly, T to T there is possibility of uh, possibilities, therefore the probabilities may be greater or equal to 0. Therefore, that matrix is a Q matrix. Therefore, the whole P matrix is a divided partition into 4 sub matrices P1, 0 matrix, R1 and Q matrix. Since it is a 0 matrix, entries of zeros. Therefore, this P1 is also going to be a stochastic matrix. The row sum is going to be 1 and the entities are greater than or equal to 0 lies between 0 to 1. So, these values are, this sub matrix will form a stochastic. This is called a stochastic sub matrix. That means, uh, I am just reordering this uh, P matrix uh, that labeling the states such a way that first time collecting all the states corresponding to the closed communicating class of states, then set of transient states and this form is called the canonical form. For a reducible Markov chain, this canonical form is very important because uh, once you are able to make a canonical form, then you can study the stationary distribution in an easy way. Now, we are moving into the stationary distribution. How to study the stationary distribution for a reducible Markov chain along with the, the assumptions 
one is a periodic and the finite state. Here I am making one more, here I am giving the stationary distribution. So, I am giving the result for a reducible finite Markov chain. Markov chain is as in the finite state space and uh, it is red, reducible one. With the close communicating class has a, a periodic states, there is a mistake, a close communicating class of states has a, a periodic states, a periodic, the closed communicating class of states has a periodic, then the stationary distribution exists that is going to be unique also and that is given by the vector v which consists of uh, two sub vectors v1 comma 0 vector that you can find out and this is nothing but the ergodic theorem for the reducible Markov chain with the assumption finite state space and uh, the states of a close communicating class as a periodic states. In that case, you will get the unique stationary distribution and that unique stationary distribution has a two sub 1 that vectors are v 1 and vectors of 0 elements. Before we get the stationary distribution, we can find out what is the n step transition probability for the same reducible Markov chain model. So, the p n is going to be you have a sub matrix stochastic sub matrix p 1. Therefore, that is going to be p 1 power n whereas, uh, for every n this is going to be a function of n or is the sub matrix which is a one step uh, going from the transient state to the close communicating class. Now, the r n is nothing but a function of n that elements uh, that ma sub matrix is corresponding to the transient state to the close communicating class. Whereas, uh, the transient to transient that is going to be a power n that is a q matrix, q matrix is the sub matrix uh, for uh, one step uh, t to t whereas, the q power n is the element corresponding to the n step transition probability matrix. So, as n tends to infinity the stochastic sub matrix that power n that will tends to E is the vector of V 1, V 1 is the sub few elements that is corresponding to the stationary state probabilities for the states corresponding to the close communicating class of states. So, E, e is the vector of entities 1 1 1 and so on multiplied by the v 1 and uh, the transient to transient n n n n step transition probabilities q power n as n tends to infinity this will tends to 0. This is obvious because since the states are uh, transient states for a finite n you have a probability q power n whereas, uh, as n tends to infinity the system would not be in the transient state. Therefore, uh, the long run proportion of the time the system being in the transient states that is 0 as n tends to infinity. Therefore, q n will tends to 0 whereas, this will tends to the stationary state probabilities. Therefore, this stationary distribution vector v consists of few elements of zeros that is corresponding to the transient states, transient state probabilities in a longer run and the v 1 is the steady state uh, probabilities in a longer run, it is not steady state, a stationary distribution, stationary state uh, probabilities in a longer run for the close communicating class of states. So, this one can solve by using the equation pi p is equal to pi, you can get this pi s that pi s is in the notation here it is v i is v 1. So, now I am making a further assumption the states are going to be a positive recurrent. So, already I made a 
a periodic states now i am making the one more assumption it is a positive recurrent once it is a positive recurrent then the limiting probability is limit n tends to infinity that probability is going to be vj's for the positive recurrent states and for all the transient states the probabilities are going to be zero and since we have a reducible Markov chain with one close communicating class and all other states are transient states, this stationary distribution or stationary state probabilities, these probabilities are independent of the initial state i. That means, either the system can start at time 0 in the one of the states in the close communicating class or transient states. In the longer run, ultimately the system will be in one of the states in the close communicating class, whether it is started initially from the close communicating class or transient states. Therefore, this stationary distribution is independent of initial state i. And for all the all transient state, you can conclude immediately these probabilities are zeros. And for a positive recurrent states, you can make it Vj's and you can compute this Vj's. Now, I am going to give one simple example in which we have an infinite state. This is going to be a reducible Markov chain because the states till 5 not till 5 including 4 and uh, 2 the system come to the state uh, 3 there is no arc from uh, 3 to 4 or 3 to 2 therefore the states uh, 2 4 5 6 and so on all those states are transient states whereas the the states 1 and 3 are going to form a one close communicating class Therefore, this is the reducible Markov chain with the one close communicating class 1 and 3 and all other states are going to be the transient states. Therefore, as n tends to infinity, this probability is a, are going to be 0 for these states 2, 4, 5 and so on and these probabilities are independent of the initial state i. So, wherever the i, whether the i is belonging to the one of the elements, one of the states in the close communicating class of states or transient states, immaterial of that, this is stationary distributions are zeros for the transient state. For the for the close communicating class of states, you can find out this probability by separately making the Markov chain. The states, uh, um, sorry, one and 3 you can make it separately and there is a arc from 1 to 3 with the probability of there is a self loop with the probability 1 by 2 and there is a self loop in the state 3 with the probability 1 by 3 and the arc from 3 to 1 is 2 by 3. So, what do you want to find out this stationary distribution for these two states. Therefore, you make a stochastic submatrix with the states 1 and 3 that is 1 by 2, 1 by 3, 2 by 3 and 1 by 3. This is also stochastic matrix you can verify. Now, if you want to find out the stationary distribution for these two states, you solve pi p 1 is equal to pi. That means, uh, pi 1, pi 3 times p 1 that is 1 by 2, 1 by 3, oh sorry, 1 by 2, this is 1 by 2, 1 by 2, 1 by 2 and this is 2 by 3, 1 by 3 that is equal to pi 1, pi 3. You take the first equation that is pi 1 of times pi 1 plus 2 third pi 3 that is equal to pi 1. So, from here you will get a pi 3 is equal to 3 by 4 pi 1. Now, we use a pi 1 plus pi 3 is equal to 1. So, using this you will get a 
pi 1 is equal to 4 by 7. Once you know the pi 1, the pi 3 is going to be 3 by 7. So, you do not want to find out the stationary distribution for the whole model. Instead of that, you can find out what is the close communicating class and you can solve only the close communicating class that sub matrix pi p 1 is equal to pi and you will get pi 1 and pi 3 and that is going to be in a longer run that is equal to 4 by 7 and 3 by 7 and all other states are going to be 0. So, this is the way one can find out the stationary distribution for a reducible one close communicating class and uh, transient states. Now, we are moving into the second type. In the second type, this is a reducible Markov chain, but here each close communicating class consists of only one element that is nothing but the observing states, but uh, more than one close communicating class are possible. Therefore, this type is called uh, with one or more observing states. Here also my interest is to find out the stationary distribution. The stationary distribution here the interest are of the different uh, way, one is the probability of absorption, the other one is uh, what is the mean time before absorption. So, for that I am making a further assumption the state space is going to be finite. Okay. So, with that I am making a canonical form. The canonical form consists of all the absorbing states that I label it as a capital A and all the transient states as a capital T. Therefore, the state space S is a A union capital T. Therefore, the canonical form I collect all the absorbing states in the first few rows and then remaining will be the all the transient states. Since uh, the observing states P i i is equal to 1, therefore, you will have a identity matrix for the sub matrix of the matrix P corresponding to A to A. Whereas, A to T observing states to the transient states that elements are going to be 0. So, that is a sub matrix with entities 0. Whereas, a T to A will be sub matrix capital R and a T to T will be sub matrix Q. So, if you go for uh, what is the n step transition probability, since it is identity matrix again also you will have identity matrix. Whereas, a T to A that is going to be a function of n, whereas a T to T will be a power n that is Q raise to power n. As n tends to infinity, the system would not be in the transient states. Therefore, q n will tends to 0 sub matrix as n tends to infinity and these probabilities are going to be 0 for all i comma j belonging to t. t is nothing but the set of transient states. Our interest is here, what is the probability of absorption? Because we have a few one or more observing states. So, if the system start from some transient state, what is the probability that the system will be absorbed into this absorption state. So, for that I am going to start with the chapman kolmogorov equation. That is chapman kolmogorov equation for the n plus 1 nth step, the system going from the state i to k, that probability same as what are all the possible? The system can go make a one step from i to j and then j to k in n steps, all the possibilities j belonging to s, where s is the state space. I know either I have a one, sorry, either I have a transient states or all other states are observing states. Therefore, if k is going to be the absorbing state, then P k k is equal to 1. That means, a one step transition probability of system moving from state k to k that is 1. Therefore, i to k in n plus 1 steps that probability I can split, I can make i to k in one step 
then forever I will be in the state k plus I would have moved to the state i to j where j is another transient state it could be same also it could be same also then j to k in n steps. Now, I am defining what is the meaning of a probability of absorption that I am denoting with the letter a suffix i comma k that is nothing but the probability that the system starts in state i, it starts in state i eventually get absorbed in absorbing state k. So, the first letter is the starting state and the second k is the absorbing state. So, this is the probability of a absorption starting from the state i to the absorption state k. Now, I am taking the equation 1 as I make a n tends to infinity in both side, the left hand side will be a of i comma k because as n tends to infinity. So, this will be a i k similarly p j k of n that is also a j k. Therefore, I will have a a i k this side and a j. So, this is sort of recursive equation. So, this is in the element form I can go for in the matrix form. So, I can write a, a i k as a matrix capital A. Therefore, in the matrix form the previous uh, the this equation for all values of i this equation as in the matrix form capital A is equal to R matrix because this is p i to k where i is the transient state and k is the absorbing state. So, e transient state to the absorption state transient state to the absorption state that sub matrix is capital R. Therefore, in the matrix form capital A is equal to R matrix plus Q matrix that is a the one step transition of system is moving from transient to transient multiplied by a matrix. So, I can do the simplification. So, I get a, a matrix equal to i minus q inverse r matrix and here this i minus q inverse that is nothing but the fundamental matrix. So, once you are able to calc find out the fundamental matrix multiplied by the r matrix that will give the probability of absorption starting from the transient state and reaching absorption state. And this probability is not independent of initial state that is very important. Whereas, the previous type of reducible Marco chain that is independent of initial state whereas, here the probability of absorption is not independent of the initial state i. So, this we can visualize through one example that I am going to present later. The next result interested in the reducible Marco chain with one or more absorbing states that is what is the time to absorption basically our interest is to get the mean time to absorption starting from the transient state to a absorbent state. That means, uh, how much time on average the system is spending in the transient states before absorption. That is very important because many application has a reducible Markov chain in which uh, more than one absorption states are there with the transient states. Therefore, what is the mean time up to absorption? that means, uh, how much time spending in the transient states before the absorption. So, for that I am going to define the random variable capital T i. The T i denotes the number of steps including the starting state i in which the Markov chain remains in a transient state before entering the absorption state, absorbing state. So, there is a possibility the system would have been spending at least one step before absorption or two steps or three steps and so on. Therefore, that is going to be a random variable. It is a discrete random variable with the possible values are 1, 2, 3 and so on. Our interest is uh, 
not only finding out the distribution of T i, our interest is to find out what is the mean time up to absorption from the transient state to a absorbing state. So, this probability can be computed by find out what is the probability of a T n is equal to n for some n, n can take the value 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, that discrete random variable probability, probability mass function can be computed in this way, you find out what is the probability of T i is greater than or equal to n minus 1 minus what is the probability that T i is greater than or equal to n. If you find the difference that is same as the probability mass at n, but this is same as the T i greater than or equal to n minus 1 that is same as the n minus 1 at the step the system is in the transient state. If a T i is going to be greater than or equal to n minus 1 that means, the system spends uh, at least n minus 1 steps in the transient states. Once it goes to the absorption state, then it cannot come back to the transient states. Therefore, the meaning of a T i greater than or equal to n minus 1 that is same as the n minus 1 at the step the system in the transient states. So, both the events are equivalent, therefore, the probabilities are equal. Similarly, you can argue T i greater than or equal to n means uh, at least uh, n steps the system in the transient states before absorption. That is same as in the nth step the system is in the transient state. The probability of n minus 1 nth step the system is in the transient state that is same as what is the what are all the possibilities the system would have moved from the state i to j in n minus 1 steps. You add all the possibilities j belonging to t, you add all the possibilities of the transient states that summation will give this probability. Similarly, for the x n belonging to capital T, this is in the for fixed i where i is belonging to the transient state. Now, I will go for I know that uh, for i comma j belonging to t, the n step transition probability is nothing but the sub matrix that is q power n. If you recall, the way we made a canonical form of a p matrix, the t to t that is a q matrix. Therefore, as n tends to uh, for any nth step that is going to be q power n. So, this is what I am using for i comma j belonging to capital T, the sub matrix of a p power n that is q power n. Therefore, for i comma j belonging to t, the n step transition of system moving from i to j that is q power n. Therefore, I can substitute here in the above equation. So, the probability mass at n that is same as a q power n minus 1 into i minus q into e vector. Once I know the probability mass function for the discrete random variable T i, then I can find out uh, the mean. Mean is nothing but uh, summation n times uh, the probability mass at uh, n T i is equal to n. If I add summation over n, that is going to be the mean time up to absorption. That is going to be, do the simple calculation, you will get uh, i minus q inverse into E vector. This i minus q inverse is nothing but the fundamental matrix. That means, uh, if you find out the fundamental matrix multiplied by the or sub matrix, you will get the probability of absorption. If you multiply by the E vector, you will get the mean time up to the absorption. I am going to give one simple example for this uh, type of a reducible Markov chain with the transient states and uh, one or more absorption state. I am making the assumption that is a positive recurrent. So, instead of positive recurrent, I have a finite Markov chain. So, the finite Markov chain at least one state is a positive recurrent. Therefore, this is both are going to be a absorbing state. Therefore, you do not want those conditions also. So, here this in this model, the states 0, 1, 2 are the transient states, 3 and 4 are 
observing states. This is an easy example in which you can visualize someone is doing the undergraduate with the probability of he is not able to complete the undergraduate in the next step with the probability of he is moving into the postgraduate in the next step. So, I am making a DTMC with the assumption the momentless property is satisfied and so on. From the postgraduate either someone gets the job 1 with the probability 1 third or not able to complete the postgraduate that probability is 1 third or he completes and go to the PhD program 1 third. From the PhD 1 fourth is not able to complete the PhD in the next step or with the probability 3 fourth he is getting the job 2. Now, you can visualize the questions what is the probability that I observed into the state job 1 or job 2 that is a probability of absorption. The next question how much time on average I will be spending in the transient states in the study before I get the job. So, this is the way you can visualize the reducible Markov chain with this type. So, these two questions are going to be answered by finding the probability of absorption and the mean time up to absorption. First, let me write the P matrix in the canonical form and all the sub matrix I made it in the different colors. So, 3 and 4 are going to form a each one is going to be absorbing states. So, therefore, A to A that is identity matrix, A to capital T that is a 0 matrix sub matrix, then T to A that is again a matrix that is R, then T to T that is a Q matrix. So, what do we need? Uh, the Q matrix and the R matrix, both are sub matrix of capital P that is a one step transition probability matrix. So, you find out what is I minus Q, I is identity matrix of the same order i 3 here minus q matrix. So, you know the q matrix is this. So, i minus q matrix find out the inverse that inverse is this much. So, from this if you multiplied the vector E that is 1 1 comma 1 you will get the mean time to absorption. And also you can find out the probability of absorption after finding the i minus q inverse that is a fundamental matrix multiplied by the or this matrix you will get the probability of absorption. I am not giving here the numerical calculation. See the result. So, this is the mean time up to the absorption and this is the probability of absorption. First let us discuss the probability of absorption. If the system start from the state 0 state 3 is nothing but the job 1. So, with the probability of you would have been observed into the job 1 with the probability of if the system start from the state 0 from the undergraduate. Similarly, with the job 2 that probability is off. It is a it is a probability mass function either you will be in the job 1 or job 2 that is a probability of absorption. If you would have started starting with the postgraduate then with the probability of and off you may be in the job 1 and 2. Whereas, uh, if you beginning with the PhD program not these two programs that is not possible, but still this is a just example. So, if you start with the PhD program then definitely you will end up with the job 2 with the probability 1, because there is no arc from 2 to 1 and will end up the job 1. Therefore, the probability of absorption into the job 1 that probability is 0 is for illustration. Therefore, you can make out how the calculation goes. So, here the probability of absorption starting from the state 2 that probability is 0 to the job 1 whereas, job 2 that probability is 1. So, this is the probability distribution of probability of absorption starting from these transient states. Similarly, you can visualize the mean time up to the absorption. This zeros can be discussed first. So, if the system start from the state 2, what is the 
average number of steps the system goes from the state 2 to 0 then it goes to the absorption state that is not possible the system is going from 2 to 0 therefore the mean time is going to be 0 because uh, the minimum time is uh, 1 or minimum number of steps system spending in the transient rates are 1 and so on therefore mean uh, is 0 here. Similarly, the system is starting from the state 2 and land up 1 and from there it goes to the absorption state that is also not possible therefore, that mean is also 0 whereas, all other values the greater than 0 that gives what is the average number of steps the system is starting from these transient states and reaching these transient states before absorbed into any one of the absorption states accordingly we will have these values. With this example I go to the next example that is a reducible Merkur chain and uh, this is a special case of a random walk also. Let me discuss what is the example this is called the gambler's ruin problem let me define what is a gambler's ruin problem. Consider a gambler who starts with the initial fortune of a rupees i, i amount he has at the time 0 and then on each gamble either wins rupees 1 or loses rupee 1 independent of the past with the probabilities p and 1 minus p respectively. So, in this game there is no draw there is no type either he wins or he loses wins with 1 rupee loses 1 rupee and the corresponding probabilities are p and 1 minus p and he started with the initial amount small i and sn denote the total fortune after the nth gamble that means a s naught is a small i and s1 becomes a if he wins is a total fortune after the nth uh, first gamble that will be i plus 1. If he loses then his money would have been i minus 1 that is the way s1, s2, s3 sample paths goes. The gambler's objective is to reach the total fortune of rupees capital N where n is a some number some positive integer without first getting ruined. that means uh, you can make a state transition diagram for this Marco chain the SN is going to form a time homogeneous a discrete time Marco chain because of uh, each games are independent and with the probability p and with the probability 1 minus k he wins or he loses therefore the Marco property is going to be satisfied. Uh, Therefore, uh, this stochastic process will form a discrete time Marco chain. If you notice, if he is uh, land up a 0 amount at the nth game, then he is ruined. If he is getting a first time n rupees, then the game is over, that is subjective. Therefore, this is a special case of a random walk one dimensional random walk in which the states 0 and n are going to form a observing barrier. Once the system goes to the state 0 the system is absorbed in the state 0 once the system reach the state capital N then the system is absorbed in the state N therefore, the states 0 and n are observing states and all other states are uh, st states from 1 to n minus 1 are going to be the transient states. Therefore, this uh, DTMC is a uh, reducible DTMC with uh, transient states and uh, two absorbing states. So, this will fall under second type the one we have discussed. Our interest in this model is uh, 
what is the probability of absorption what is the probability that uh, he loses all the money at the end of some game or what is the probability he reaches a capital n that is his objective so that is the probability of absorption the other one is uh, how much time he is in the transient states on average what is the mean time of absorption till he reaches the absorbing states either 0 or n. So, for that I am making a the notation first p suffix i that denotes the probability that the gambler wins when s naught is equal to i that is i, i means a initially i amount he has that is s naught. So, what is the probability that a gambler wins? Clearly, p naught is equal to 0, similarly p n is equal to 1 because uh, no way if he is having initially 0 amount he cannot win therefore, that probability is 0. If he is as if he is having initially the gambler has the amount uh, n amount in at the time 0 itself then he need not play at all therefore, that probability is going to be 1. Therefore, the probability the gambler wins that probability is going to be 1 if he is having n amount initially. For all i in between 1 to n minus 1 you can make a recursive relation using the Chapman Kolmogorov equation. That means, uh, the probability that the gambler win with the i amount initially that is same as either he has initially n plus 1 sorry i plus 1 amount initially and uh, with the probability p he wins or with the probability i minus 1 the pro the gambler wins multiplied by the probability q, q is the he loses. So, these two combinations will give the probability of gambler's win. You can do the simple calculation the way we have p i's in terms of p i plus 1 and p i minus 1 you can write a p i minus 1 also then you find out the difference then you will get the recursive way and you will get in terms of p 1 and everything you will get it. So, you can use a p capital n is equal to 1 using that you will get all the p i's. You can use this relation p naught is equal to 0 and capital p n uh, capital P is capital N is equal to 1 using these two values you find out the difference and you make a recursive relation you will get a P i's. So, whenever the P is less than Q and uh, P is greater than Q you will get and the P i's uh, is 1 minus Q minus P power i divided by 1 minus Q power P power N. For P and Q is equal to same that means, it is off because q is 1 minus p therefore, you will get the probability of gambler's win that will be i divided by n that you can get. And here the interest is what is the probability that he is going to win that means, uh, this is the probability that he is going to win and uh, the 1 minus of that is going to be the probability that he is going to win in this game. The next one is uh, our interest is mean number of games because the objective is uh, he has to reach the capital N amount. So, the game is going to be over either he completely ruin or he is going to get the N amount. Therefore, I am making uh, here the random variable M suffix i this is the suffix i. So, M suffix i is denote the number of sorry mean number of games I am directly making a random variable for mean suffix i and I know the relation for this and here also I am making the similar relation by solving that I will get the m i's. So, this is the mean number of games in the mean number of games played by the gambler until he goes to broke or wins completely fortune n. So, in this lecture I have discussed the reducible Marco chain and the types of reducible Marco chain and some examples also and finally, I have given gambler's ruin problem. 
references are these. Thanks. Thank you.